Hello, I'm Dr Jo, and this is a special science club for STEM clubs week. Let's find out what we're going to be doing. So in this science club or STEM club, uh, we're going to be thinking about all things to do with sports science. Now, there's an awful lot of science in sport, whether that is thinking about anatomy and how our bodies work, our muscles and our bones, or the physiology, how those different systems work and interact, like the cardiac system, so the heart and the respiratory system, the lungs, so heart rate and breathing rate, really important in terms of sporting performance. But we can also think about strategy as well. Now, whether that's the tactics for a game or thinking about angles when you're trying to think about where to hit a ball uh, or whether that's actually more to do with the brain. And that could be about visual spatial perception um, or even about how quick you are at reacting. Now, I'm a neuroscientist by background, and that means that I study the brain. And the brain is really important in controlling all sorts of things with our body but it also has a lot to play in terms of sporting performance as well. Now, whether that is to do with the attitude and your personality around how you approach sporting uh, events, or whether that's about the, the planning, the strategy, the angles, um, thinking about things like that, that organisational side, or whether it's about the communication between the nerves in your nervous system. So we're gonna take a closer look then at the brain. So inside the brain, there are connections between these nerve cells or neurons, and they talk to each other with inside the brain, but also take in information uh, from your, your sensory organs, so from your seeing, from hearing, from touch, from everything that's going on around you. And then they also take in information, process it within the brain, and then also then there's a response from those neurons as well. And those nerve cells or neurons connect uh, and send a message or an impulse along the length of the neuron, an electrical impulse that then turns into a chemical impulse at the synapse to connect and jump over to the next neuron. And the speed of transmission is governed by a number of things. It might be the pathway that joins those, those neurons together. It might be um, the fact that there is a, a myelin sheath along the length of the axon, that big long part of the neuron which allows the electrical signal to kind of hop between them and move more quickly. And this can translate into different reaction times when you're performing a sporting activity, maybe catching a ball or playing football or even going on the, the B of bang at a start of a running race. So if we have a closer look at the brain and think about what's going on then with our, in terms of reaction times, and the information we're processing. So here's a model of the brain. Now on the outside, we've got the cortex. And at the front here, you might have information coming from your eyes that travels across the optic nerve to the back of the brain to this visual cortex area here in the occipital lobe. So if I take this apart here, you can have a look inside this model. You've got the occipital lobe at the back here. So the information from the eyes is coming in and going straight to the back of the brain in the occipital lobe. That information is then sent via those neurons to the parietal lobe to integrate that information and then sent again to the motor cortex here, which then sends a signal to those nerves to catch a ball. So the speed of transmission of those different stages of your neuro nervous co coordination uh, involving this area, the cortex here, uh, and this part in the middle is more thinking about emotions and regulation and the brainstem at the back here is more involved in those autonomic functions, uh, the things that keep you alive, um, such as your posture, your balance and your breathing. So having a, an idea of what's happening in the brain then, so a signal is coming in, it's being processed and it's going out again so that you can react. Now we're going to have a go at testing reaction times in this STEM club. So you're going to need a ruler for this activity. So here I have a ruler and ideally you'll have a partner as well, because we're going to um, get one person to hold the ruler and another person to catch it. So you can see here, uh, here's my ruler right at the bottom here. We're going to start at this side. So there's a zero. I'm not touching the ruler. You're going to ask your partner to drop the ruler at a random point and then you need to catch it. And 
the point at which it hits here, we're going to go for the the large the the round it to the nearest uh, centimeter on the ruler there, and then you're going to test it more times as well. I just get that in the light. Uh, so we're going to test it again and again because it might be a fluke. So what's your reaction time the next time? Well, it was 27 first time, and now I've got 16. I've no idea which one to to trust. So I'm going to do it 10 times and take an average. That was with my right hand. And I'm going to try it again with my left hand and see if there's a difference. So this time I'm close to 19 centimeters uh, on the ruler. And again, I'm going to do that 10 times. And you can take it in turns with your partner to drop and catch the ruler, making a note of the numbers where you react and catch it each time. Remember to start with the zero at the bottom and not touch the ruler. So a handy table like this might be useful. So you've got your right hand and your left hand, and you're measuring the distance that the ruler has fallen before you've caught it. And we can use that to translate it into your reaction times. So in this experiment, this investigation, we're comparing left and right hands. So we're going to work it in, work in pairs and take it in turns to, to drop or catch the ruler. Record your results in a table a bit like the one I've shown you. Then you're going to draw a bar chart of your results. And then we can have a look at these. Uh, so you're going to add them together, create an average and draw a bar chart of them. And does it make a difference then if you use your left or right hand? And does that make a difference if you are left or right handed for writing? You could, if you'd like, translate the distance that the ruler fell before you caught it into a reaction time in milliseconds. A millisecond is a thousandth of a second. So if we look at my 27 uh, centimetres on my first drop, that would give me a reaction time of 23 milliseconds, uh, 230 milliseconds rather. Whereas my second drop, which is around the 1617 mark, uh, is only 190 milliseconds. And actually, if we have a look at this table, we can see where that puts me. So the 230 milliseconds of my first drop puts me as an average uh, reaction speed there. But the slightly faster one, uh, puts me with a good reaction time. So you can translate that distance that the, the ruler, ruler dropped into your reaction time in milliseconds and whether that is average or faster than average or below average. And then you can have a look at how maybe your reaction time compares to the rest of the population. Some additional investigations you could do. So we've compared left and right hands maybe you could look at the data as well and say, does reaction time differ between um, old and young people? So between children and adults, does it get faster or does it get quicker? Does reaction time differ between boys and girls? You could have a look at the data in your class and see uh, if boys or girls uh, have faster reaction times. You could also have a look and think about whether reaction times might differ if someone's tired or alert. So maybe doing it at different times of day. This investigation has also been done on people who have consumed alcohol. And unsurprisingly, it's found that actually your reaction times are delayed if you've consumed alcohol, which is why it's not a good idea if you've been drinking alcohol to operate machinery that might need you to be alert or, or drive a car, for example. So over to you. It's time to investigate your reaction times and see how fast the communication happens between the neurons in your brain and your body. Have fun.